I have in my hands, easy, an album that I'm extremely proud of. It was the follow-up to an album that I did initially in 1974, and it was called Return to the Centre of the Earth. It cost an arm and a leg to do this album, and to me worth every penny, and I have to say a huge thanks uh, uh, to Richard Littleton, who was the head of EMI Classics at the time, who really believed in this project and just gave it everything. Recorded at the old CTS studios, um, now defunct, in fact it's part of Wembley Stadium's car park, which is an absolute disgrace, but there you go, who am I to say anything? And uh, recorded really with Eric Jordan as one of the engineers, there was two engineers, there was James and Eric, because uh, it was a massive job, recorded digitally, um, but on digital tape. Um, it, was, it was very early days of that on two, I think the machines were Mitsubishi, I can't remember exactly, but they were, they were great. They, they're still around those machines somewhere, but nobody ever really uses them anymore. It was uh, incredibly difficult to record uh, because of all of the oh, ingredients that went with it, with the different singers, with um, Patrick Stewart. Uh, obviously with uh, the English Chamber Choir, with the London Symphony Orchestra, Ozzy Osbourne, to Justin Haywood, to, oh, it was Katrina and uh, Bonnie Tyler. I mean, it was just a fantastic line. The whole thing was just brilliant. Although there were a few hiccups. I came back from America after recording Patrick Stewart and, of course, uh, Trevor Rabin, Trevor, who very kindly sang on a track as well he did uh, never is a long long time and i came home and i wasn't very well to put it bluntly cut a long story short um i was rushed into hospital uh with double pneumonia and chronic pleurisy and uh, put into an induced coma and i wasn't a very well chap and the album some of it was done luckily by eric and a few others who actually knew what i wanted to happen and in fact, Bonnie Tyler was recorded in London uh, when I wasn't there, but she just did a fantastic job. Um, um, Ozzy recorded in America and I couldn't go back over there because I was, I was so ill. And in fact, if you look at some of the pictures in here, which I will come to in a minute, uh, you will see that I was probably the, the thinnest I have ever been in my entire life. I think the last time I was that thin and that drawn was just uh, around about the time I was born um, with the old umbilical cord but of course I don't have the umbilical cord now but the album I just loved to bits um, we had problems uh, with some of the EMI classical companies uh, around the world thought it didn't class as anything that was worthy of being uh, on a classical label uh, but a lot of countries did and thankfully, um, uh, Richard Littleton believed in it really heavily. It was performed uh, twice live around that, uh, in Canada, both in times in Canada. Second time was uh, uh, in Quebec on Heaven's Plains, and the estimated audience was 82,000. And it was the most astonishing night. They had screens with films and fireworks, and it was one of the most exciting concerts I've ever done in my entire life. I always dreamed of doing Journey and Return uh, together, one after the other, anywhere we could do it, but so expensive obviously to do with the orchestra and the choir. I have done it where I've taken some of the pieces from Return and put them into new versions of Journey that we've played live, but this as a standalone is, is very special to me. Now, this box set is probably of all the box sets that have been done my favourite, well currently my favourite, uh, let's just put that up there, it'll fall, it'll fall over, but I'll put it up, yeah it's fallen over. Uh, what have we got here, we've got a a numbered edition, this, this one is number six, there you go, so for those of you who can count up to six, that's number six. This is, I'm, I'm looking at this as going along, this is a promotional uh, thing that the, the like a press thing kind of thing that went out at the time this 
is the poster from from Canada, which is uh, amazing. Because I'll be brutally honest with you, I, I must have seen one while I was over there, but I, I haven't seen one since. Full of little goodies. Uh, oh, this was their promotion. This was the poster with a record myself and Patrick Stewart on the on the other side. Uh, 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 and this was the thing they, they, they used as a promo thing. In 1974, Rick Wayman took 12.5 million people on a journey to the centre of the earth. Now, 25 years later, he wants you to go back. And, and I did. And for those of you remotely interested, what it was was how to rewrite the... Not rewrite the story, but how to do a second story, because the first story was so good. And when I used to get stuck on what to do, I used to go down to Tenerife. And I had places in Tenerife I used to walk up Mount Tady, the volcano. I used to walk along the beaches. And it would clear my head and I would get ideas on how to make it work. And I took the book over with me again and was reading the book. And in the book, cut a long story short, it talks about... Uh, when they reached the bottom of the uh, base of the volcano and into the crater and, and they took I'll probably get it rather wrong way now the, the the westerly route because that's where the sun was shining down or whatever and the shadows fell and and it suddenly occurred to me if the shadows fell on another entrance then they could go that way and have a whole load of new exciting trips because there were other things in the books that I never really used very much so that's what I did. So the entire storyline was was written uh, in in Tenerife, uh, and uh, which I still have obviously a great fondness for because of that. Here is that was the ticket to the most wonderful launch that they did at uh, the Natural History Museum, and here's a booklet that's been specially put together, which is just it's just fantastic. Very well worth a read. Another little story here. There's Patrick Stewart. Now here's a story. I'd never met Patrick before. And I went to uh, America to the studio that he liked using. And uh, he he turned up with an enormous entourage. I had one day to get the, the narratives all done. He, he'd seen the narratives. He'd approved them. He really liked the story and everything. And he came fantastically nice guy but he had one lady with him who was obviously looking after him his age or whatever who said to me um and I, pardon me i can't do an american accent um, you've got him till 4 30 and then he has to go off to another me meeting i'll come and collect it so he's just got a 4 30 he must have his certain breaks this this and this and this and and she shouted at somebody in the studio and he this is just before he arrived uh have you got mr stewart's special bagel ready and they're going and i'm thinking oh what the hell is going on? And, and he turned up and he was absolutely lovely and he took he, he spent so much time helping me change a few words here and there to make it to make it better he was just brilliant but it occurred to me about about three o'clock in the afternoon we weren't going to finish nowhere near it so i, I was starting to panic and i didn't know quite what to do and then his uh agent lady turned up and she said uh, uh, you, you, your car's here, uh, uh, Patrick, Mr. Stewart, uh, off to your next uh, uh, appointment. And he said, I don't have another appointment. And she said, well, I, I think you, you do. He said, well, cancel it. I'm not going anywhere until I've done this. And she went, well, I really do think, he said, goodbye. And, and, and Booterite said, all right, let's finish this. And we spent about another five, six hours. He worked for really, really late. And he did an am amazing, caring job on it. And, uh, and at the end of it, I said, thank you so much, uh, Patrick, for such a fantastic job. And he said, it's a really good yarn. I can't, I can never beat really good yarns to work with. Excellent, well done. And so I, I thank him an awful lot and always, always will do. Um, just to show... I told you I was ill. My God, I was ill. Um, and here is the original press releases, which they've uh, redone, uh, especially for the box set. And something else that was found, which was fantastic, which is my original 
typing out of the original narrations that uh, for which went off to, to Patrick and um, I think there may have been one or two little alterations that he did uh, but uh, that's that's brilliant as well the other thing that was interesting it went narration piece of music narration piece of music narration piece of music and the album was put together so far that it was coded so that if you just played the odd numbers you just got the entire story and if you just uh, wanted to play the even numbers and, and programmed your CD or whatever to do that, then you just got all the music. Really, there were so many things that were way ahead of the game then. So that's that that goes on. And this all goes in, goes, actually somebody else can deal with that. This can go in there. Now this is something I've forgotten all about. How unique is that? Ozzy Osbourne, who did the most amazing job on uh, uh, Buried Alive uh, after I sent him an invite to the album launch party. And this is the letter from him, what he says, signed by Ozzy. And if you want to have a good look at it, you'll have to buy it. The uh, under here, of course, look at that, the original. Unbelievable artwork from uh, Roger Dean. I went down to his house when he was painting and it was on the, on the wall. And it was just absolutely brilliant what he, what he did. Um, wow, look at that. And... In here we have the original CD. We did uh, radio mixes to be played on radio because radio wouldn't play things that were over uh, eight seconds. So we actually did very, very good radio edits for that single edits as, as we called them. Although there was never a single released except in Sweden where they released, uh, we had permission from Ozzy's record company to release uh, Buried Alive but on a limited edition number. The limited edition number sold out on the day it went in to release and the album went into the top 10 over, over there and they were desperate EMI to release some more because they said we quite generally would have had a number one single. But uh, nothing to do with Ozzy. Ozzy was fine, but Ozzy's record company said, no, you can't. Great shame. And uh, I'd love permission to be sought to get Buried Alive released again as the as the single that would be that would be the icing on the cake for me with everything uh, that is a lot of the film footage that was done to promote it and also at the uh, the, the launch party and whatever and that is there's lot, lots of footage from the studio never before seen there's uh, 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 there's also an uplift surround which Simon Hayworth did fantastic job on uh, as I say, missing footage that people have never, ever seen. It is stuff that I've never even seen. Anyway, it's an album I'm very proud of. I'm very proud of everything that it's, it's achieved. I uh, always felt that it had a longevity to it. And hopefully one day we can do that. And I can do my wish of journey and uh, return on the same night. Open air festival somewhere. Big film footage stuff behind. Uh, how great would that be? I might even get some blow-up monsters. <laughs> Under here, of course, is broken. Um, under here, of course. This is why we can't have nice things.